Yeah. You didn't know I could do plumbing, did you? <laughs> Don't inspect me soldering too closely. Look, what's basically happening here is there's a there's a blow off for the boiler, and it's not long enough. When the insulation goes on this wall, the blow off is going to be inside the insulation. So a few things need extending, and this is one of them. And uh, it, this is fine for me to do. The flue I can't really mess with. You need to be a gas safe engineer for that. But for the little blow off, I can do it myself. Not the neatest well. Not the neatest soldier in the world, but it works. Oh, right. our nice new straight bay trails have arrived. We've got a beautiful weather as well. Sun shining as usual in the UK. Nice. Be careful, is not you? <laughs> Crazy phone. <foam. laughs> you get a bit trigger happy with this, and you're fucking covered in this stuff. <laughs> I'm still a big kid at heart, really. Don't be writing your name, okay? okay. These screws are actually going through the timber and through the metal as well. So they're fixing it to this and to the metal cladding behind. Now another thing as well I never mentioned in the last video. At the top of this cladding the corrugated section goes up behind the fascia board. Which means that this cladding is only on the surface up to there. And as it goes up behind that, sorry fascia board up behind that soffit, there's a gap. So in between this cladding there's air circulation so we don't need to worry about any condensation on the metal because when it vaporizes the air can circulate right we missed a few uh, we missed a few videos out for you we've sort of gone ahead and not really showed you how we're up to so What 
what I'm doing here is first of all all the splayed metal reveals with screwed cement boards are then so you can render over that and bead the corners up then whenever we need to fix things so where the um, letterbox is going to go lights and things like that fit the cement board under there then we mesh over it and then base coat over it so you know that when you come to put a fixing in you're not just fixing into the polystyrene and you're not having to use like you know 150 mil screws and try to get to the, the concrete base coat instead we can just fix the thick cement board so here for instance where i've just been cutting a bit of the insulation out yeah i know you lose you know 10 mil of insulation but that's not really going to make a difference but then we've got this bit of cement board that's going to fit in here that will get foamed on the back of it. It'll also get two holes drilled in it so we can put the, the washers in with the knock-ins and then we'll mesh over it and base coat over it. And then when we come to fit the letterbox, we've got something nice and solid to screw to. When you're doing this, when you're putting these in here, they don't fit. It's not the, I mean, it's not the best fit in the world, but it's better than having nothing to fix to. So that now goes in there nicely. If I leave all those little um, little bits on the back of the plug, like that, it doesn't sit on very flat. It sort of stays up and off it. So it's got to sort of adjust them a little bit and just shave these little little wings down. We see them. Look, these little wings here, just shaving off so that that can sit flat on the cement board. And I've took it in a little bit further because the head of the mushroom plug then sits flat behind there. So we'll put them in. We'll foam the back of it. Put this in. Not put the knockings in. Big piece of mesh over it and base coat over the top of it. Job done. This stuff, by the way, destroys your tools. So just use a cheap trowel because you get build up on it over the next day or two. It will not come off. It does not come off. So don't bother using your best trowel. We've took measurements of this, we know where it is, so that once the job's finished, we know where we can fix the letterbox to. This is good also. We've got to put a porch back on here. So we've done a similar thing where the framework of the porch is going to get fitted. It's only a fiberglass porch, it's like a lightweight one, but even still. So we've got solid fixings for that and the outside lights are here, you see. So that's why I've come down a bit further to we've got a solid fix of the outside lights. We're also, I tell you the really important place for this as well, if you're going to do it like this, is for your outside tap. Um, so you've got a nice solid fixing. So, you know, when you get your, pulling your hose pipe on and off, you don't rip the tap off the wall. 
Right, so we are getting around these windows done. Now, that's a metal profile that was flush with the wall. We've put the insulation on top, notched it out so it fits on a metal profile. And we said to the customers, we can either put them square like that, we could have just kept this insulation over and made it square like we've done with the sill, and what we're going to do with the head. Or we could put the ones that these splayed. So ultimately what we're going to do now is put cement board, because if we put insulation over that, 90 mm insulation would be out in front of the window. And I don't want to just mesh it and rely on the base coat to stick to the metal. I don't think it'll stick. I haven't tested it, I could test it, but I'd rather do it this way because that joint there, there's two different backgrounds. This way, we're going to put cement board over that, and then we're going to put a bead on the edge of this, and we can just base coat straight over that. So to help that stick on, Just put a bit of foam on when it comes out the gun. So we foam that on, and then we've got these metal screws. These go straight into the metal, no problem, because it's only thin. It's only thin section, it just goes straight through. What's that fit? <laughs> you put the wrong bit in it. Once this is done right round, we'll bead the corners and then base coat straight over that. This is only the first layer of base coat just to hold the mesh on, so it's not very neat. This stuff as well, the rear mix, it's absolutely horrendous to try and get on flat. I mean, some base coats you can put them on and rule them off. This stuff has got that much polymer in it. It just doesn't rule, it just sticks to everything. In fact, to be fair, it's absolutely um, it's crap to use but it's a fantastic product. Once it's stuck, it doesn't come off. It wrecks your tools, it wrecks everything it touches, but it doesn't come off this um, polystyrene, so it's good for this. It's very flexible. But yeah, come around the front, we'll show you around the front. Like I say, it doesn't look beautiful now. The next coat we put on, the only way you can work with this is to get your foam as flat as you can, put this on as tight as you can with the, with the base coat, and then we put another coat of this on, we, as I'll be putting it on, Kieran will be coming round with a wet sponge behind me, just rubbing it up. You can get it quite smooth <coughs> with it. Sorry. Sorry about Kieran coughing. You can get it, it's a nightmare, isn't it? You can get it quite smooth. It's better than Sam. When you have Sam on the camera, and all you can hear is... <sighs> like Darth Vader. You can get this quite flat with a trowel and then rub it up with a sponge. A wet sponge gets it lovely. And then it's ready for the primer and the acrylic top. We'll come round here. The windows that have been base coated already. These have been beaded up and base coated. So what will happen is they'll get, a, if they'll get another coat all over it. And then <coughs> it'll get the acrylic on top. Now the sills, we haven't done anything with these yet because these still need over sills going on them. So um, ultimately... Same as the next door. Um, we're not going to use plastic sills because they're too thick. You can actually get sills that are designed for insulated renders. So they're very thin aluminium profile that goes over. Now also, another thing you've got to take into account is window frames get watered inside them and they drip out on the sills. These haven't had any drip members put in them. 
So we're going to drill in here and put some little drip members in the front of the window frames. So any water that goes in can come out onto the windowsill and drip off as it's supposed to. Right. Are we filming? Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's a rascal. I'm going to give you a little bit of... Um, not teaching you to suck eggs, you might already know this. But it appears that Kieran doesn't. So, for the benefit of anybody <laughs> else out there, similar to Kieran that doesn't know the difference, there's two types of bit you can get. And they're both like a posi drive. Now, your PZ bits have got four wings on them and they've got these little intermediate ones in between the wings. Can it focus? Can it see? Mm. And your PH bits haven't. They've just got four wings. There's no like little star sections in them. Now, drywall screws, and as it turns out, these self-tapping metal construction screws, these are a PH bit. There's no star section. So you need a PH, you need a PH screw gun. You know, you need a PH bit in your screw gun, like that. It hasn't got the little star section. Kieran give me a PZ bit, and then, because it doesn't go all the way in the screw, when the impact started, it shatters it. Probably because it's a crappy Milwaukee bit like anyway, that doesn't help. But, know the difference, PH and PZ, drywall screws. If you're trying to screw drywall screws into a plasterboard or something, or these, and the bit won't stay on, it's because you've got the wrong bit. You need PH, PH2 for drywall screws and PH2 for these metal screws. Yeah. Right, there's the difference for you. Sorry, this one's a little bit rusty. That's a, a PZ2. It's got the little star sections in it. And that's a PH2. It hasn't. They're both the same size, but completely different. Drywall screws. Drywall screws go with PH2s. These are what like joiners use for wood screws and stuff. Right, two little tips for you, Kieran, for concentrating on what you're doing. Two little tips for you. One, don't be stupid like me and make sure you've got a guard on your angle grinder. The only reason I took this off is because we were trying to get in an awkward place and then we lost it and we haven't had one since. So, no one is allowed to use this apart from me, because if a bit breaks off and it hurts me, it's my own fault. Um, that being said, when you're cutting cement board, you don't have to cut all the way through it. You have to make a little notch in it. And it's the same, this is only thin, but with the thicker stuff that we've been using for, you know, um, getting fixings for screws and stuff, you only have to cut a bit into it, it's like plasterboard. Once you cut into it a little bit, you can literally just break it, it just snaps off. So you don't need to go all the way through it. Hey, just like that. It's gonna make a liar out of me now. <laughs> <laughs> Right, another little thing that I want to show you as well. When you get the insulation, if you get any little bits that are sticking out like this, you can use a saw blade to scrape it back, but you can get these, these pads that are designed for rubbing it back. See, with little steps and stuff. Now, don't pay any attention to this one here, or this one. This is where Kieran's gone wild with the screw gun and started trying to tighten them up into the middle of the house. But, you know, <laughs> we can fill these back out again with, um, with base coats, so it doesn't really matter. But you don't need to put them in that tight. You want them just so they sink in. Now, there are, there are special little tools that you can get the cut bits of insulation out for your washers to go in deeper. And then they have little, little polystyrene heads that go in them. You can use them. Uh, they take a little bit longer. It's fine. Unfortunately, the supplier I buy this from, they don't do that system, so that's why we haven't used them. And all it, it's just to stop a bit of um, 
thermal bridging, but I mean, ultimately, it's not fucking necessary at all. Um, but you know, if you wanted to go up above and beyond, I would have done it because I'm putting this online. I would have done it just so that no one can go, yeah, he hasn't done the little things that polystyrene, but I can't get them so. I'm not doing it, unfortunately. But yeah, use that to shake down. And another little tip for you as well, you end up absolutely covered. By the time you've cut all this and shaved everything, you're covered in polystyrene and trying to brush it up is like herding squiddles. So, one of these is invaluable. So here's where we're up to so far. The front of all the buildings has been done. Now, when, um, when the council did the other houses, they put big bands around the windows. See like that? Like them ones in the distance over there. Um, customers here didn't want that. Now there's a metal profile behind this, so we've put cement board over it, but we've kept ours quite tight quite small so they're not really in your face um, and that's basically it the whole house has been insulated we are just waiting there's a bit down here this outhouse section isn't getting insulated we're just going over this we're just waiting on this to get done there's a flue extension to go on there we bought the bits, we're just waiting for the, the plumber to come and do it. And then, that's it, basically the back just to get done. The side's been meshed as well, as you've seen before. That's all been meshed. Now, good news as well. Check this out. Look what's back. Oh, we're there. Wait for the pedestrians to go past on to film them. I finally got my van back. I've done my little truck for God knows how long, it felt like forever. I must have been in that little, um, my little green Hilux for months and months and it was soul destroying because I ultimately only bought that as a, like a little investment, a little toy and I've been working out of it, which is fine for months and <laughs> months, months. So I'm glad to have my van back anyway. But anyway, guys, it's Friday. Um, we're calling it a day. It's... Quarter past five, so it's definitely time for a cold one because the sun's shining, and uh, and I do believe they sell beer in the pub, so we're gonna have to go and have a look. So there you have it. That's where we are currently up to on our external wall insulation job. Uh, it's a little bit tedious, and it's quite a repetitive sort of job. So there's not much sort of stuff I can film for you. Yeah, there's not much footage involved, but I'm going to do my best to keep these updated and show you little bits along the way. Now, it's the Friday the 19th of May today. If you would like to win a DeWalt cordless mixer with two 5 amp hour batteries, you can do that. There's a link in the description. You can pay the little subscription for it, put your name on the list. And on the 30th of June, I'm going to pull a name out of a hat and potentially there might be other prizes. We'll just see how we get on. But the 30th of next month, there'll be a winner announced for the DeWalt cordless mixer. Personally, I think it is probably the single best investment I have made uh, by myself, one of these whisks, in the last 20 years. It genuinely has been a game changer. Not much advances in plastering. You know, joiners get nail guns. There's all sorts of different things. I've not really done any spray plastering. That might be a bit of a game changer if I ever got into that. But at present, just not having to carry a generator around or a 110 transformer or have to find a plug socket, just having the, 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 the capacity to be able to mix up anywhere without any power with a cordless mixer, has been an absolute godsend for me. So, if you would like to win one, get your name on the list. Link in the description. Cheers, guys. You know I love you. Ciao.